Again, my broken bird. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No, you have to stay always half aware of yourself. You're not cooperating, brother man. It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety. But you cannot. Because of the pain. That pain in your right side is your enlarged liver, by the way. As for your kidneys, you've really been compounding the damage lately. But this suffering, it must have some kind of meaning. A story that will come out of it. Perhaps even a story that you will write yourself. Now you've gone off the rails, baby. Now you're stuck sitting here by the tracks, admiring the wreck around you. You just can't help it, looking at yourself. The sum total of your accomplishments. You're just stuck here, in the half world could try looking at other people, really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? How many promises have you kept lately, Sir Harry? To the great see-through world. The tenderness. Thou art honorable and just, sire. Tis the snakes who are vile, hissing in the grass. Come now, humans have earned your trust, and you, Liz. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some greater awareness? Look at all these lights, blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts! You're just pretending that you're asleep, even to yourself, while the world goes on without you. Let it. Let it. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Yes, I am. I know. Here's the real deal. It's hard to tell whether he's sarcastic or sincere, but if you had to guess, you would say the lieutenant is being sarcastic. I'm definitely not the cavalry. I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you?
Of course he does. Word of the end to come. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Mm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? What precinct? Am I from? God, he doesn't know. Fucking deranged lunatic. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. I don't... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Judith. Me? No. I'm just a man with sunglasses. I like wearing sunglasses inside. Sunglasses and a fucking wig. Okay. I'm just looking out for... No one. I'm just a man with sunglasses. You look like shit. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm going by here. Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. It's not just this week. What do you want? There's something about this guy that matches with a face in your head. A similar, but different face. He might be wearing a disguise. Yes, it's a hobby of mine. As if waiting for some kind of reaction or response. Something to click. It's not... About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like? Yeah, sort of. Okay, I get the reference. Like, after he got run over or something. He didn't answer your question. No. The man in sunglasses nods. Watch out for yourself, loser. That voice, so very familiar. Did you hear it when calling to your station and reporting your badge missing? Oh really? I wonder where. That's the where you remember me from?
You don't say. Goodbye then. The voice thing was a coincidence. Run along, asshole. Again? I can't believe this shit. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. Yes, from another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? He seems to be observing you through the reflective glass of his eyewear. There's no reply. Perhaps... That's exactly right. Down to a fraction. I don't even know what to say to that. What is your goddamn station? I think even in this fictional reality, the 57s would still be...
Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. Nothing. That I didn't see anything. Why shouldn't he? What friend? No, I don't think it came up. Muscular, handsome, strong, like one of those military types. Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. Just reporting back what it was mercenary, he said. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> Why not? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He can always return. To his opportunities in Occident, Sir Leclay. Still, his coming and going brings some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. Friends, I told you. Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. <sighs> that he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. It is. On Sundays. He has keys. And he likes the view. To the sea, I mean. Hmm? What about me, gendarme? You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Blend in where? A carnival? Bye bye, gendarme. Hi again, gendarme. Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? Just pointing it out. We're not talking about some kind of cult with members here. You made it up. The homosexual underground? Why, yes, I am, officer. Why? Do you want to investigate? Oh, it's a pleasure group. A Sabrosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on to our daily life. Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Rebishol have to hold on to. The true symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father, their marriage. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. But do you also like the razzle-dazzle of gold? Do you like parties and discos and having fun under the vibrant lights of Saturday night? Because instead of the traditional family unit, we're going to have all this razzmatazz. And mysteries, of course, too. Mysteries of sexual nature, very esoteric. And disco music and drugs. Sure thing, officer. What do you want to know next? Bye-bye, gendarme. Rusting control panel with loose wire. The water lock starts moving. Okay, if we ever need to get to the coast, then this is the way. But please, contain your wanderlust for now. 
I don't want us to get sidetracked, but with everything that's going on. Focus on one thing. Achieve it, then the next, he thinks. That's the task chain. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. In this yard? He's assessing the situation. How long ago was it abandoned? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. A black block, a part of the city left and renovated after the war, or one that has fallen to gang violence, or has become inhospitable in some other way. On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares, hence their name. Practically, it's not an official term in any way, but look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drums. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. Yes, for you to scavenge like a post-apocalyptic scavenger who collects trash and errant magnesium blisters. It's not meant as nagging, just an observation. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland, at least in this phase of the investigation.
The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved... These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. Mm -hmm. I know you do. These inter-Isolari pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to be. Makes sense. This is what wearing boring office trousers does to you. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. This is it, the scene of the party, the fire pit, cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. It must be cold and lonely down there, in the icy water. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. It appears to be so. I agree. We should definitely investigate. 
you get a sudden, sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. The logo is too deep in murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. The estimate is correct. The incident probably occurred on Sunday evening. Your mocking tone finds no response but the motion of the waves. Yes, yes. Clearly, this is a trial. I'd say the vehicle has been here since last Saturday or Sunday. Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The Joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, papers, maybe a cool jacket. A Joyrider jacket. A Joyrider jacket? You feel a strange connection to this Joyrider. Maybe he's from some kind of joyriders district and likes blue and white racing livery, like a cop would? I don't know. An hour or two tops? As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Yes, yes, it does. Hmm. Let me think about it. The tune on your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Two birds on a wire, whistling by the seaside, looking at the water and the sunken car. The clouds pass in the sky and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. Well, historically, leeches have been used to prevent and even cure many ailments. Okay, he's thinking. I can do this. Let's do this. Who'd want to sit on an anthill? There are no therapeutic benefits to it. Well, napalm ants, for example, are used in some rites of passage rituals. Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. God, I hope so. Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Detective, I've been able to make out the mark ever since we arrived. I find it odd that you haven't. It's a coup prix, model 40. It is a simple and rugged machine, favored by working men, government offices, firefighters, animal control people. You know, those kinds of people. Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about that speed racer?
A precinct, yes. A police precinct. Precinct 41, your precinct. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, and the most terrible feeling comes over you. No, just no. Say no to this, Harry. I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Of whom? I don't think so. If anything, you were probably drunk. Detective, we don't. A rescue operation really isn't viable at this point. That is very unlikely. All the electrics are toast. That goes for the electromagnetic steering and brake systems as well. You'd be lucky to find one undamaged component in there. In a few months, there will be nothing but rust left of this vehicle. It'll be cheaper to buy a new one. Well, not cheaper. This motor carriage costs 40,000 real. But in the long run, it still makes more sense to buy a new machine than try to refurbish this. Let's face it, this is a substantial loss to your district's budget. I mean, my station only has four other vehicles in addition to my kinema. This was 20% of the station's vehicular budget. Well, it isn't. It's you. I'm very sorry. People are more valuable than machines. Training a police officer is even more costly. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and doesn't say anything. There is also a fourth thing you've lost. More precious than the gun, the badge and the motor carriage combined. Lost forever into the deepest of seas. You can still whistle. Besides, the night is always darkest before the dawn. I'm afraid it will have to be there like that for many years. Look at it. Parts of it might be salvageable. But overall, this machine is a write-off. Yes. Let's go take a look.
detective? Well, he's not. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see light. Lieutenant W. Freighter. The lieutenant is a rank above sergeant and below captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. The title of Yefrator is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, Captain. You have declined twice, thus your double Yefrator. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's décontage might be taken. Or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes, they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank. In your case, Lieutenant. Heavy duty case solving machine. Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kings. Kings like satellite officers and the additionally a freighter rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. You are given the title of Satellite Officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. You don't seem to be a satellite. My pleasure. Yes, uh, apparently you've had a rather successful career in the past and this leads me to believe maybe your current situation is only temporary. People have been through worse and gotten back on their feet, Lieutenant W. Freighter. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. It reads... That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. The numbers are not there for good measure. They have an administrative purpose. One that's unfortunately been erased from your memory. Four months ago. I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. A lot can happen in four months, especially in winter. The winters are never easy on you, of that you are sure. Yes, it's the designation of your precinct, 41, like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbour, a lot of asphalt. The 41st is... It's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. But then again... But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. Roberts, Feuerbach, Dimitri. Suddenly, names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. And you? Is it an honor to work with you? Don't ask him, ask yourself. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines The porter reel is just what you needed. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. You press the large button marked Commencer and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. It sounds like someone's moving in the room, getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple melancholic tune echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, telling you about the tiniest church in Cessons, surrounded by even tinier yard. 
you almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Within seconds you know this is the one, the real shit you've been looking for. The one you trust your room to that Classia told you about. Perform it. A click. Then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. Of course you could see this. You could take sad to a whole new level with this. And you already know the lyrics since you've listened to it, like, a million times. Yup, they're all here. All three verses. And the B-side of the tape contains the instrumental version. It's like the world itself is telling you to do it. Only one obstacle stands on your way. God, you have to convince God to let you sing karaoke in the world. After you've won him over, you can express yourself. Let the pain out. Make everyone understand. The lieutenant watches you pack up the boombox. He doesn't say anything. It's sometimes called Illicibler. The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Let's see. Who are you looking for? Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? Aha! Like snowmen. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, Talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Right. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? Well, how can I assist you then, officer? 
Are you? Hmm. This says by signing, I agree to living with construction noise. What exactly is the union building? What a nice idea. Wouldn't have thought that... She sounds incredulous about the niceness of the idea. That Evrar and the Union have nice plans for anything. I thought they only cared about themselves. Well, I guess Union members have children too. And those members have a vote when electing the head of the local chapter. Aye. Why not? Fine. Here you go. You're welcome. Oh? Who? Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insular Indian cuisine. Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. Wood, pieces of glass, Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. Bottles, drugs also, lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. All right, major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Well, the RCM has to wait for another one, because some army folks came by, took it in the middle of the bay and blew it up. The blast was surprisingly timid for such a huge spiky thing. Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. No, I'm afraid not. Tempting to confiscate the blade I use to keep these animals in check. You would put me in an early grave. What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. Oh? Believe me, everyone here is a proper man. Must be something about poverty that makes all the men real. Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Guess I enjoyed the way he bled. If it is, then why the men are gone? Gone. It absolutely does not. We are not going to look for him. No, no. There's nothing to find. He's dead. Lost to the waves. He didn't respect the sea. 
Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bedsick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. Sure is. The sun, I call her, coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. A row 
row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least, their heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet, no sound, no movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner, automatic rifles primed. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. The morning sun rises beyond the horizon, radiating the first light of the day. The order was carried out at dawn. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar, each and every one of them. Comrades, the forsaken, the wretched, who tried to rise against the horrors of the world. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Men of duty, dark duty. Murderers, twisted by orders, young boys forced into killing. The Commandant, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air, the lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. Or maybe... Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. A cold sea wind blows away the figures.
rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion on the bars. They're foaming with it. And a small layer of white salt from the sea. No. I won't even try. You know... I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. smells really bad. The cloth, if you can still call it that, makes a soft crunching sound. 
as you thrust your finger into it. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tangled with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please tell me you're not taking that with you. It's a guano-encrusted jacket, and you're already carrying around enough as it is. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. It's a sordid, filthy tale. Not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature, tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Somehow, it was carried or dragged to the boardwalk, if not by human hands, then perhaps the feral dogs that prowl the beaches at night. The faint impressions of many footprints are also present, though it's impossible to tell what kind or how many. Suffice to say, the jacket spent some time on the ground before someone draped it over the railing. The crust is hard. This jacket spent at least a day baking in the sun. Who knows what happened to it then? It's too late. You've already thought about it, and now your hands are covered in muck. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. Awful and familiar. Don't be naive. Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency, that faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Fear. The signs of decaying meat. It announces itself from two dozen meters away. A warning. A memento mori. The lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some pills in the bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads, Shish Kebab Revachol. It's no older than a day or two. No mold yet. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief.
seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. They screech under your feet ominously. It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. He could have easily disappeared into the sea through that hole, and you would have never found him. A 0.75 liter Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. Tear all around us. Rubowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? This is an omen. A sign from above. Don't start drinking again. We do know that he was married. But you're right, let's not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Oh, yes. Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and relate it to the murder case. Agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still a question of identifying the body. From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case.
not sure about the melody, but it might be Saf Samaran, possibly Sigeum, also known as the Apricot Suzunti. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you are considered an ill omen. You're not. No one around here considers us an ill omen. People would have told us. Maybe they are afraid. Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then. Because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone. Searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me rambling. What brings you to us? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shop. I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Oh, don't. It's your choice. No skin off my teeth. My kids grew up and left like they do. The house is long empty now. I live in the small side attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. Aye. The room is pretty bare bones, but it's got a bed and roof over it. That's more than some folks have around here. When Varsan communist revolutionary Ignaz Nielsen was in hiding, he stayed in a hut on the Boreal Plateau for ten months. Go ahead. Call people rude things. We've heard worse here. Now, are you interested or not? Suit yourself. But should you ever need shelter, remember old Isabel and her shack by the sea. Just us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. This is pretty much a non-place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. The lack of wealth is the one thing we've got in abundance. It's a cold, cynical smile. Riddles. Fits with the general ambiance here. Aye. Sometimes, it's as though I'm also gotten lost inside this nameless nothing. Oh. It seems to be a common theme these days. Maybe it will be easy, but right now you want something from me, right? Over there, you can find more of the same. Sharks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. 
an old military hospital and its surroundings. Or it used to be during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses, shacks as far as the eye can see. The goodwill ran out, the staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. Well, there's Lillian and her kids. If you knew folks live in the house to the east, but they are away right now. And then there's the drunks. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Lillian is tough. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, this place wouldn't have a spark of life left. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Here, for you, no officer. The only money we have here is some coins the drunks tried hiding from their women and then forgot about. Under carts, boats, in little boxes, it's not hard to find. She nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run-down bunch of houses, empty. I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something, before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Of note, the old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. No one. That's why it's closed. It was once a bustling place, back when I was young, and so was everyone else. Now, what catch we do bring in goes straight into a lorry for the Delta or somewhere else. As I said, it's a peninsula. There's no one there, just ghosts and vagrants and teenagers making out. Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr. Quite a handle you got there. So many titles. One of them, double. She's got a couple of ranks herself, on a chief and so on. Eh? What's this about? Come now, I can't read all the scribble. Tell me what it says. Huh, I might be half blind, but it looks like part of the village is gonna be a street. The best part, the part we need to get out of our houses. I see Lillian's name is already here. The girl is too trusting. Either way, I won't sign union papers. I've seen it all before. You think they've got our interests at heart? 
Rich men are always selling poor men promises they never plan to keep. Then the poor get pushed out of their homes and the rich get a little richer. That's the way it goes. So no, I don't trust the fat men, and neither should you. In her mind, the union is right wing because Everard is fat. It's that simple, and there's no change in it. She speaks with the authority of a leader. Hers is the final word around here. She is headstrong, but there's a slight hesitation in there. You may be able to convince her. I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Well, hand it over there, and I'll see what I can do. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. There's a gap where the name of that song should be. You should ask her about it right now. A lullaby my mother used to sing. I sang it to my kids too. It's an old Samaran children's song. Surrender to the night. That's kind of grim for a children's song, even if it is a lullaby. Yes, it does. You have accumulated a substantial amount of honor points on your life path. You are a man most virtuous. Of course there were honor points. Did you think no one was paying attention to all of your honorable deeds, honorable one? Oh, the modesty on this one. Another ten honor points for you, sir. You are on the fast track to becoming one of the rarest, most revered of all police officers, an honor cop. Yes, your deeds are spoken for you, honorable one, but to fully drape oneself in an eternal cloak of honor, a ritual must be completed, a rite of honor. Even among the honorable, only the most dignified are deemed worthy, but you, Oh, Honorable One, have excelled in honor. Honor comes from deep within you, and to truly know oneself, to know one's honor, one must reach deep within oneself and touch one's honor. You need to bring the thumb of your right hand, your sword hand, to your rectum and stick it in there to form the Arch of Honors. People will be in awe, admiring a police officer most honorable in a sacred ritual of uttermost righteousness. What are you doing? Really? It seems more like a personal hygiene thing. But let's not dive deeper. You're right. The lieutenant, although a noble man, does not understand honor like you do. Best not to waste time trying to explain. Lead by example. Congratulations, honorable one. You have become a member of a noble faculty. A man kneels, an honor cop rises. Go forth and commit even more honorable deeds. And should your resolve ever waver, remember the right of honor will always cleanse a man's soul. It is an honor to serve with you, honor cop.
replaced me. Logic and reason won't work on this old bat. Better go for shameless emotional manipulation. What's the gram of his deepest vulnerability? What do you mean? What's going to happen? We are gonna grow up, of course. I raised my own kids in this village and they are doing fine for themselves. I, they are good kids. I brought them up the right way. No, we moved to Faubourg for work. Well, I imagine we'll grow up and live too. You've got her. Now just reel her in. Then... Wait. Let her come to it herself. I don't believe the fat man's youth center is going to change anything. But what other choice do we have? It's not like the coalition government is coming to save us. I won't be around much longer anymore. Not with the dampness in my bones. If they want to take a chance, who am I to stop them? Did you say something? Fine. See that you didn't just get us all screwed. I might be half blind, but I have a good memory for treachery. <sighs> Let's go, Melit. There. Working class drunk. You know what this means, right? Cracked it. All in a good day's work. What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. No, it's not. No. Stop goofing around, recruit. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Didn't she repeatedly tell you her husband isn't missing them? Do marriages make any sense? Does honor? You're not a filthy philosopher. You're an officer of law. It's time to ace this case and not brood over your reputation. We can deal with the perception management later. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found right now.
You're back. Oh. Of course, detective. You can all... The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, 005. That's the dialing code for Revachol. 4952. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. 993. Nine, calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Ravishal, 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy, how may I help you? The voice of a youngster on the other end sounds as enthusiastic as that of a man walking towards the gallows. Video Ravishal is a 24 hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lamy. Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. No. Maybe you called to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? Let me fire up the machine. Dubois. Dubois. Here we are. You haven't rented anything in five years, but you still have a copy of Blue Ocean Hell from November 46. Whoa, not a fun film, that one. Ugh. It's not an easy watch. After the death of his daughter and subsequent divorce, Ziemsk immigrant Igidius Wojcik tries to come to terms with the onset of dementia. No wonder no one's been missing it. Still, it would be great if you could return it to us. We're on the corner of Voyager and Maine. The call is terminated by the other party. You're left with the discomforting sound of the disconnect tone. Mr. Dubois, I hear the meeting with Titus was a glowing success. That's such a relief. Titus can be a handful sometimes. Now, what can Everard Clare do for you today? The Golden Boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a real future, Harry, and I feel I can finally trust you now. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, 
nothing is off the table. You hear that? You did it the honest way. You got the real signatures, and now he's happy. Well done. We would have preferred trickery, but the choice was yours, sire. As always, you are the liege, and you're in. Harry, by now you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access makes some people consider moving, well, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. He proudly spreads his hands to demonstrate the size of the palaces. They're very large. So the village is doomed. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left. But mark my words, officers. We are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martinez. And they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on a coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. Harry, imagine a youth centre supermarket church complex. Employing hundreds, no, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. Yes, I do. I got the center, I got room for a retail complex, and in four years, I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. Damn right I am, Harry. I'm going to make the working man as rich as she is one day. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. I did not, Harry. Although I am very, very glad he's dead. Why a war, of course? And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines Group and win before they even realize there is a war. Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1, and that's just Martin Ames. With all the unions in Revachon, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. You're not an ultra-liberal, Harry. Get the fuck out of here. Don't be a retard. Harry, there is no strike, only war. Class war. Or, in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait. Is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gourmand go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her arsehole. She has no chance. Tits from her arsehole. It's a local saying. Actually, no, it's not. Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. We have a significant head start. It's already happening. Two thousand three hundred and seventy-two. Plus yours truly, of course. 
2,373 is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Revachon. And they're all well motivated, at least the ones you've seen. Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. Sure, some will go, but mark my words. The company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. Haven't you seen the crates outside, Harry? There's all sorts of fun stuff inside them. I mean, heck, this one has you and the lieutenant, me, and my novelty swordfish clock. Did he just deflate slightly? Was there something he wanted you to ask about? Maybe you should come back if you learn something relevant and ask again. You should definitely come back here and ask again if you learn more about the Union's dealings. There's something he's not telling you. Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. Your gun is with an old woman. I hear she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy. The one he described as terrifying. Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway... Union Boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the Pigs. There it is again. The Pigs. Like Roy said, not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. More fun stuff. Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. I'm always happy to educate and entertain you. Very nice, Harry. Is there...
wondering, man. 